All right, welcome to another Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video. And again, you're dealing with just me. So this is part three in the, let's say, like, tripod of reef dosing video series. Uh, I alluded to in the other parts about how magnesium is by far the most underappreciated part of that tripod, uh, to the point where I have never been asked about magnesium ever. Uh, so this entire video is going to be about, so why magnesium, why is it important, and how? Uh, I'm going to start off with, so this is the only magnesium supplement we have in the store on the shelf at any given time. Uh, if you'll remember in part two, I mentioned that Acrovitro was the, let's say, high-end line. So the Acrovitro ions, that's magnesium. So why is magnesium so important? So let's start off with, it's complicated. <laughs> Seawater chemistry is so complex because like when you talk about dissolving like sodium chloride or just straight up salt in water, that's pretty easy to understand because it's like it dissolves until it's saturated. Now the fun thing about water in the ocean is that it's got Carbonates, bicarbonates, chlorides, calcium, magnesium, stromium, etc., 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 and all of these ions interact with each other and mess with each other. So, fun fact: calcium. In case you didn't watch part one, is calcium is actually super saturated in seawater, which means that it's actually really unstable, and that's why for corals and other calcium carbonate depositing organisms that they can do that because since it's super saturated in water, it doesn't stay stable, dissolve, and it actually favors being deposited in a precipitate state, which would be like in the skeleton of a coral. So have you ever been in a situation where you're like, man, I am dosing alkalinity and calcium all the time and they're always super low. My first question at a situation is always going to be, have you tested your magnesium? So that's how this relationship works. So on this side, what I've got here is this is a, let's say, solid calcium carbonate. I represented the calcium ions with blue and the carbonate ions in red. So things that are dissolved in water don't just stay in one state. They naturally like cycle through like in this close-up view of a single calcium ion, it's gonna, if it can, it'll dissolve back out into the water. And when I say can, I mean as nothing is getting in its way. And then if it contacts this surface again, it will at least temporarily precipitate out and connect as part of that surface. So the, that's why I drew this as an uneven surface because if everything's dissolving and then dissolving out again, it's never going to be like a perfect straight line at the molecular level. So then this side I added in magnesium. So magnesium adds in this really interesting aspect of, you'll notice that I put even orange arrows representing, theoretically this should be at equilibrium, theoretically. At this side, the magnesium has now thrown that equilibrium completely out of whack. Let's say you took this water and then just influxed a bunch of magnesium. Uh, that would be really hard to do, but let's just say you only added in magnesium. The fun thing about that is, is magnesium can also bind to carbonate. So you'll notice that it is now becoming part, it's now this like calcium, magnesium, carbonate monstrosity. And because now the alkalinity producing carbonates can attach themselves to not one, but two different types of ions, they're more likely to get buried in the precipitate out structure. And so there's theoretically fewer carbonates out here now in this example, but more of them here. With a coral skeleton, that means now the coral is going to grow bigger and its skeleton is going to be more stable. Now this isn't a perfect example here because, well there is other things like chloride and actually magnesium bonds to chloride better than it does with carbonate, 
But so you're not actually going to, in most cases, unless your equilibrium is really out of whack, you shouldn't be lowering your alkalinity by adding in magnesium, but you are going to increase the calcium because now all of this carbonates that are now bound to magnesium, that means there are now more free calcium ions. And this is where I get back to the supersaturation part. It's really unstable, and the more stuff you have going on in there, the more you can skew things in your favor. So I know that was really complicated, really wordy, and I'm sorry, but <laughs> the easy way to think of it is magnesium keeps other ions busy so that more calcium, more chloride, and more carbonates and bicarbonates in practice can be in solution in the water in an area where they're freely up for grabs for your corals. And it also means that now the water is even more super saturated so that when they grab those things, they can retain them easier and longer. So that's a really long way of saying magnesium is really important, guys. You should really be thinking about it because, yes, calcium and carbonate are really intuitive, but magnesium is less so, and it's really just complicated microchemistry. So I don't know. Think about your corals a little bit more in that respect. Think about dosing magnesium. Uh, an ideal magnesium concentration is somewhere between like 1250 and 1230 parts per million. If we use the Red Sea test kits, it's a little titration. If you're familiar with the calcium test uh, from Red Sea, it's basically exactly the same. Uh, so it's not too hard to get into it. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to stop in the gallery. I will happily show anyone how to test it because we do test stuff here all the time. Bring in some of your water and I'll happily walk you through what's going on in your tank. If you have any questions about that, feel free to message us. If you have any types of videos you'd like me to discuss or over discuss in this case, uh, feel free to message us. Check us out on our podcasts. Uh, check us out on Facebook. And stay safe out there and keep those hands wet.